It's only game one, and I might not have a voice tomorrow. Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney, and if you can tell by how my voice sounds, I was down at the BMO Harris Bank Center tonight as the Rockford Ice Hogs took on the Texas Stars in game one one of the first round of the 2022 Calder Cup playoffs. Earlier this afternoon, I put up a playoff preview for the Ice Hogs. If you have not watched that yet, I would suggest going over there and watching that. It's a good primer to get you ready for this playoff series between the Hogs and the Texas Stars. But go over and watch that once you're done watching this video. So as you can tell by the title of this video and my generally happy demeanor at the moment, the Rockford Ice Hogs won one, game number one by a score of two to one. That's a pretty tight game right there. But let's start from the top. And we have to go all the way to the beginning before the first puck drop to warm-ups when Ian Mitchell was on the ice. Now, I was busy during warm-ups, so I didn't actually see him take the ice, but I did get on Twitter and I saw somebody mention that Ian Mitchell was on the ice for warm-ups and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool, but he's injured. There's no way he's playing, right? Well, I should have kept scrolling down Twitter. I would have seen that he was in the lineup, but I did see him take the ice for a shift and I was like, oh my God, Ian Mitchell's playing tonight. It was like I was playing Pokemon and a wild Ian Mitchell has appeared. That's what I get for not checking all of my notifications, I guess. But I will take a good surprise like that over a bad surprise. So that started off the game tonight on a very high note. And I must say the defense looked awesome tonight. Ian Mitchell looked like he hasn't missed a step. Of course, it was a wrist injury, so I don't know why that would mess with his steps, but it's just a saying. He was paired up with Isaac Phillips. As usual, those two played a bunch of minutes. They looked really good out there. They were both skating well. They had their gaps under control. They were winning puck battles. They were clearing pucks out of their defensive zone, but that's just what we have come to expect from that D pairing of Ian Mitchell and Isaac Phillips. Especially when the opponent tries to go down into Isaac's corner. Like, what are you even doing? That's not gonna work out for you. You'd think teams would know this by now, but I mean, I guess I can't complain if they keep trying to do it because it doesn't work. But Alec Regula also looked good returning from the Blackhawks. There was only one penalty for the Ice Hogs in this game, and it did go to Alec Regula in the first period for holding, but the Ice Hogs killed it off. It was a fantastic penalty kill for them. There was also only one penalty for the Texas Stars in this game, which was also in the first period, and they also killed off their penalty. So the PK for both sides was one for one tonight, and it was kind of nice not having a whole bunch of special teams play. Of course, having the Ice Hogs on the power play a bunch wouldn't have been a bad thing. I certainly wouldn't have complained about that, but it was kind of nice just to have a game of even strength hockey, not too many whistles, really. It was a tight checking game. There there weren't a whole lot of grade A chances for either team. It was a game where there was stretches of little to no action with bursts of chances for both teams. But in saying that, I don't mean that this game was boring at all. Just both teams were playing very well. The Ice Hogs were locked in defensively. Arvid Soderblom looked great in net. He was locked in. And the Texas guys also did pretty good. I mean, I think the Ice Hogs controlled play for most of the game, which was very nice to see as well. I said it in my preview, but games between these two are pretty unpredictable. I wouldn't be surprised if Friday night for game two, Texas comes out flying and they look like the better team, but I also wouldn't be surprised if that happened and the Ice Hogs ended up winning. I don't know what it is when the Ice Hogs take on the Texas Stars, but it's just wild and unpredictable. You either get tight checking games like this one or you get complete offensive blowouts. I guess that's just hockey for you, but it seems to happen more often when these two teams are matched up together. But talking about it being a tight checking game, not a whole lot happening either way. The game was scoreless after one period. The shots were 11 to 10 in favor of the Texas Stars. So both teams were taking shots, but again, there weren't a whole lot of great chances either way. There were some. Lucas Reichel had an absolutely fantastic chance. I want to say it was on that one power play, but 
Matthew Murray in net for the Texas Stars came up with a fantastic stop. And no, not the Matt Murray that you know of from the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Ottawa Sunders. A totally new Matthew Murray in goal. So to the second period we go, scoreless. Who is going to break this tie? Who is going to get the first goal of this playoff series? We didn't have to wait too entirely long to find out. Six minutes and 53 seconds into that second period, the Texas Stars, being the silly team that they are, decided to engage in a board battle with Isaac Phillips, and you already know that this did not work out well for them because they lost said board battle. DJ Busdecker ended up getting the puck, got it to Michael Tepley, who took it out into the neutral zone. He ended up sending just a beautiful little pass over to Lucas Reichel, who was then left all alone one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender, and Mr. Lucas Reichel was not going to miss that. He is way too good. Rookie of the year, top scorer for the Rockford Icehogs, and the first goal scorer of the 2020 to playoffs for Rockford. It was such a nice looking goal. I got so happy when that puck went into the net. I'm pretty sure I almost passed out while standing up to celebrate it, but totally fine. Doesn't matter because the puck was in. The Ice Hogs had a one to nothing lead. The BMO was absolutely rocking. We were having a grand old time in downtown Rockford, Illinois. But once again, a tight game between these two teams and they went into the second intermission with a one to nothing nothing score and the shots on goal were tied 21 to 21 which if you've been following along with the Rockford Ice Hogs this year having them at 21 shots on goal after two periods is very good for them because they've had less than that after a full 60 minutes in a game. So the boys in red were definitely shooting the puck. They looked really good. Like I mentioned before, they were controlling a lot of the play. There was a time during the second period where Texas was really pushing and I felt like they were going to score a goal for sure. And I love being right, but what I love even more than being right is being wrong when it benefits my team. And this was one of those cases because the Texas Stars did not score during the second period. I will take that any day of the week, especially in the playoffs. So on to period number three, the Ice Hogs with that one to nothing lead. This is a close game. The Ice Hogs look great. The Texas Stars look like they could score a goal at any time. They also played well. So the Piggies had to do what they do best, and that's lock down a game, help out their goaltender. They were clearing second chances away. There were a few pucks that laid there after Soderbloom made the initial stop, and that is something that I mentioned also in my playoff preview, is that there's been a few times throughout the season where where the defense hasn't been able to clear up those rebound chances and then the Ice Hogs do get scored on. And there were a few pretty scary pucks tonight where if there was not a defender there to block it or to immediately clear it out of the way, then Texas probably could have got one of those second chance opportunities but the defense was on top of it tonight. I really have to hand it to them. The Rockford Ice Hogs defense looked really, really good. That's not too shocking. I, I've mentioned before that the defense is good this year for the Ice Hogs, so maybe it was just it being my first game back at the BMO since November, or they were just especially dialed in tonight. I don't know what it was, maybe a little bit of both, but man, those guys just looked solid back there. They weren't making too many ill-advised passes. There were some that went not where they were intending it maybe to go, but it didn't end up biting them really. They were clearing pucks. They weren't letting Texas set up too much. They weren't letting them just walk in on Arvid Soderbloom. Basically up and down the lineup, everybody was doing their job tonight. And then four minutes and six seconds into the third period, Cameron Morrison has the puck. He sends it over to Isaac Phillips at the blue line, who takes a shot toward the net, and it doesn't go in off of his shot, but it does go in after it deflects off of Carson Gusevich and past Matthew Murray into the net, two to nothing, Ice Hogs. And you know, as soon as I saw Isaac take that shot, I was excited when it then ended up in the net. I was wishing that it was his first playoff goal, but I will take that assist. Tonight was the debut of my Isaac Phillips jersey at the BMO Harris Bank Center. He had a fantastic game. He had an assist. 
I will take it. Good for Carson. It was his first playoff goal with the Ice Hogs. And it was a huge one for the team because four minutes and 53 seconds into the third period, less than a minute after Gusevich's goal went into the net, Texas got one back. Frederick Karlstrom, fresh off of a journey up to the NHL, was able to just get all alone with Arvid Soderblom. He was pretty far out of his net to cut down the angle, but Karlstrom found the open spot and just roofed it on him two to one. But what are you gonna do? I said the Texas Stars have plenty of guys who can put up points, score a bunch of goals, and you can't just expect them to go scoreless all game. Arvid looked great tonight. It was only one goal. And you already know I said the Ice Hogs won this game two to one. That was the only goal that he allowed. Texas did have a pretty strong push as time was winding down when they had their net empty. They had good possession time in their offensive zone firing at Arvid Soderblom but the boys in front of him were blocking shots, they were getting sticks in the way, Arvid was making the saves when he had to, time ran down, and the Ice Hogs took game number one of the three game series. That means when it comes to game number two on Friday night, if the Ice Hogs win, they're done with Texas. That's kind of the silly thing about a three game series. You only got to win two of them. So with the Ice Hogs winning game number one, that puts them in a very good position. If they don't manage to win the game on Friday, game number three is Saturday night. A good old back to back in the playoffs. Don't you love it? But it really cannot be overstated how much of a complete game the Ice Hogs played tonight. Up and down the lineup, I don't think I can name one guy who had a bad game. The checking line of Captain Garrett Mitchell, Curtis Gabriel, and Dmitry Osipov was especially noticeable tonight. They were all over the ice, and I think they kind of set the tone for the Ice Hogs tonight that they weren't going to be messed with. They were laying the body all over the place. They were setting up some offensive chances themselves. That line was really impressive, which really isn't something that I was expecting out of the game tonight. You expect it from the top lines, but those three really showed up to play. Lucas Reichel, of course, got the first goal of the game, the first goal for the Ice Hogs. He looked good tonight. He was dancing all over the ice with the puck. He even laid a hit or two himself. Also something I wasn't expecting to see. Evan Barrett had a really nice game. He made himself noticeable physically as well. And Dylan McLaughlin, man, the kid just does everything. He was once again all over the ice for the Ice Hogs tonight. It was great to have Ian Mitchell back. It was great to see contributions up and down the lineup, be it on the score sheet or not, just being engaged in the game, making the good, smart plays, the short passes to get the puck out of the defensive zone, dumping the puck in deep, and then going to chase the puck, clearing those rebounds away from Arvid Soderblom so they don't get the second chances. The Ice Hogs came to play tonight and they weren't going to be denied that win. But it was only game one. They still have to play game two and then game three if it is necessary. So they've got to put this one behind them. As much as we would love to just relive it over and over again, we have to look forward to game number two. And there's not too much I can pick apart from this game, but going into that second game, I would say they have to stay on top of their emotions like they were in this game. They were playing very physical, but it never got out of hand. Again, there was only one penalty per side. And I don't really think that came down to playoff officiating where they were swallowing their whistle. There just weren't many infractions going on on the ice, which was nice to see, as I said before. It was a fun game. It was a hard fought game. And the Ice Hogs came away with the win, which was even more fun. So that is all for me in this one. If you would like to hear more from me or from Center Ice, you can head on over to fromcenterice.com where there's links to all the places where you can find us. If you would like to follow along on social media, you can find links for all of those platforms down in the description. All of that being said, thank you so very very much for tuning in. Whether you are an Ice Hogs fan or if you're a Black Hawks fan who doesn't want to let go of hockey just yet and you want to hear how the prospects are doing, I'm happy to have you. I'm happy to tell you how they're doing down here in the playoffs. So again, thank you for watching and tuning in. Subscribe to this channel if you aren't yet. Give this video a like. Pray for my voice that it comes back before the next game. And I will catch you all in the next video. Bye guys.